Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I got startled by the Zoom voice there. Um, I hope you're all having a wonderful Friday the 13th. And uh, it's kind of fitting. We're going to draw some garlic so we can keep all those pesky vampires away. Uh, we are going to be working with Derwent Drawing Color Pencils. If you're not familiar with these, they are a thick lead fairly soft colored pencil, nice and opaque, um, but they are kind of related to like a colored pencil. So colored pencils will work in a pinch if you don't have these pencils today. There's only 24 colors in this range, so it does make getting the set fairly affordable if you are interested in these. Maybe you're trying something else today, but you're thinking that you may want to purchase some in the future. Just this will give you a good idea, but absolutely use what you have. And uh, we're going to be drawing for about an hour today. Because of the time limitations, we're going to focus on one garlic. And I'm going to draw it nice and big so that you can see it on your screen really well. And then on your own time, if you want, you can use the reference photo that was provided on the Michaels website. Or I do have a lot of garlic reference photos on my Instagram if you need some more. Or you can go through your pantry or to the grocery store and get some garlic that you want to draw. Because that's the best when you have it in real life. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to have Nicole switch my camera to my overhead view. If you have questions when we're going along, just pop them in the chat and Molly from Derwent will either help you out or relay, relay them to me. So uh, you'll be all covered with any questions that you have during the process here. And I'm going to put on my new granny glasses so I can see what the heck I'm doing. All right. I really like this garlic here. I think it's got some really interesting shapes and would be fun to draw. Um, the photograph from my artwork here is available on Michael's. My printout did not print very well, so I'll probably go from my actual artwork here. And we're going to start off with the white pencil. And this is the Chinese white. Now, these are available open stock, which means if you just want one color, you can just get one color. And um, a lot of artists like to use the Chinese white for their really opaque white highlights. And these are compatible with other color pencils you use. So you don't have to, you know, you can get a couple and add them to what you already have. You don't have to rebuy everything. Now I'm hoping that this will show up. If not, I'll go in with a darker pencil, but I would like you to sketch with your white for now. And I'm going to make a really big garlic. Again, draw whatever size you're comfortable with. I just want to make sure that you can see. So I'm starting off with this kind of like a, just kind of like a circle that kind of comes to a little point at the top. Okay. I think that's showing up pretty well. On the bottom here, I'm going to put an oval and that's going to represent the root ball. And then we've got this uh, this kind of folded over stock area that I think is really interesting. So we're going to go ahead and just put that in. And it's going to, that outside edge is just going to kind of be a little ways away from the bulb. But then when we go in and we put that dimension, we put in that second line, that's going to overlap the edge of the bulb a little bit. Okay. And then I am going to draw this little kind of loop here where we can see that the stock is actually kind of like a hollow tube. And we've got a little dimension there. And that's pretty. It's pretty when you can get those little dimensions in there. Now, each, oh, now garlic, if you were to peel the skin off the garlic, the outer skin, you would notice you would have this close. Right? So we're going to draw one of these balls. And this is the one closest to us. It's going to be the most around and just a prominent and it's kind of like a pumpkin. They have those um like the the segments of pumpkin or the ribs on the pumpkin. And then next to it we've got this other shape. We're gonna we're gonna just do like a half of half of that shape because it's it's kind of tucked in behind that first one. So that's all we see. And then we just got a little guy back here, just another little curvy line. That's all it is. Just a curvy line. Y'all can do that. And then we got another this curvy shape over here. So this is a nice plump bulb of garlic. And we've just got this basic, basic shape right here. Um, I'm going to switch to a darker pencil now. Now, I do recommend you have a pencil sharpener handy. You will want a slightly larger hole for these Derwent drawing pencils. If you're used to more slender pencils, these are a little bit chunkier. I'm going to go with uh, a nice dark brown. This is called chocolate. It's nice and dark. And the reason I'm going to, I'm going to use this right now is because I like to get in, I like to get my bright whites and I like to get my darkest darks. And it helps to, um, it helps me to identify these values and get these values in first. So I'm, I'm seeing this dark kind of shadowed area there. 
I want to get that kind of sketched in. I also want to get this part where the the uh, skin is kind of peeled off a little bit, very lightly. Don't color firmly because you don't want to fill in the tooth of the paper. This paper is fairly smooth, so it will fill in pretty quick. I had a student ask if they could use can't send me tons for this, and you absolutely can. Uh, I would use a smoother side because otherwise it's going to take you a lot to fill in the tooth. So I'm just doing some scribbling here for some texture. Again, I'm not filling the tooth in. I just want to get some of that rooty texture on the bottom and then a little bit of shadow on the outside of the root ball. And I'm going to get a little bit of shadow right in here. Sometimes it can be difficult to get these shadows in um, after we put on a lot of lights because we've made the paper slick. All right, now we also have some details in here. We've got some, um, we've got some loose skin. So I'm going to draw this kind of shape right here. This, and it doesn't have to be exactly the way mine is. It's, you know, the, the skin can tear off in so many different ways on the garlic. So you just get these papery uh, shapes and these papery layers. And we've got some layers around this here where it's kind of torn off. And we've got a little shape up here where the paper's kind of torn off. Now, when you start to add color and, um, and marks, you want to make sure you go with the shape of whatever you're drawing. So our lines going around the bulb are going to kind of follow the closest edge to our line. So if I put a line up here, it's going to be really curvy. If I have a line in the middle, it's going to be more straight. If I have a line down here, it's going to be curvy towards the other outer side of the bulb. On this one, our lines are going to curve in relationship to this line here. So we just want to make sure that, that whatever we put in there for lines are, is going to agree with our drawing. And it really saves us a lot of headache in the future if we don't have to go and, and correct the direction of our drawing. I'm going to throw in a little bit of shading over here and see how I'm putting my lines in. I'm holding the end of the pencil so I don't push too hard. None, nothing that we're doing right now should give anybody any joint problems or hand tiredness or anything. We're just going really light. These pencils are nice and pigmented, so we don't have to, we don't have to press really hard and we don't want to dent our paper. All right, so we got our basic shape down now. Uh, now I'm going to choose some, um, some like yellow ochre colors, some whites and some light blues. I recommend you swatch your colors out so you can really see how they'll look. It can be kind of tough to go by just a little tip of the pencil. We'll pro we're, we're probably going to end up using most of these colors here. Just want to make sure I keep everything kind of in frame for you so it's a little easier to, to see everything. I'm going to turn this around so I can grab my pencils a little bit better. There we go. That'll work. Okay, I'm going to start off with yellow, and I am just, like I said, going with the contours of my garlic. I'm going to start adding some linear color. And I'm going to do it up from the bottom again, going with my contours. So as I get towards the center of the bulb, my lines get kind of straight. As I start working towards the other edge of the bulb, it's curving the other way. pull some of this color into the stock while I'm at it. I'm going to grab the blue and add some of that in there. This color is called smoke blue. It's a kind of a grayish, grayish blue color. And you'll notice the more color you start layering up, the less the paper will grab it. That's why I wanted us to go in with those dark shadows right off the bat. And the rougher the paper, the more pencil it will hold, but the longer it's going to take you to fill it, fill in a drawing. Add 
put some of this into the stock as well. Got that kind of torn paper there. I'm getting a little, little of the blue. And I could throw some blue onto this one back here as well. I'm holding back on my pencil a little bit more too, just so my hands are not in the way as we're going. So you can um, you can choke up on the tip of the pencil a little bit more if you want to. If you know you have a line that you don't like, um, it's a good idea to try to erase it before you start layering over it. So that way you don't trap it down there. I just noticed I had a little bit of white that was kind of hanging out where it's not going to end up getting getting covered. So I just wanted to clean that up. Um, I'm going to grab some of the uh, Mars Violet, which is just a very muted, beautiful purple colored, kind of a dusty, dusty mauve color. I like to jump around because you can end up getting one area so detailed um, and just focusing on one area and either realize that um, something isn't right with it and then you've you know spent all that time on it or you might end up getting one area so detailed and then you realize you have to do the whole thing, that level of detail to make it look like it's like it works. And that can be you know more um, detail than you planned on putting in. I'm shading here with this purple and I'm just adding some of those streaks onto the clove. I'm going to put a little bit of this purple up here in the shadow underneath. So we've got one torn piece of um, garlic paper skin and then we've got this other piece. So there's a little shadow in between those pieces. So I'm just putting that in with that purple. I'm going to fill in this area with that purple as well. A little bit back there on that little, little torn piece. And I'm going to go in with the Mars Orange because we've got a lot of that here in this little exposed clove. And I'm going to put some of that in there. And some of that up here in this shadow at the bend of the neck of the stock. I like to make big marks when I'm when I'm drawing. I move my whole arm. That might not be possible depending on where you're sitting or how big your paper is. But if you are drawing at large, if you can move that whole arm around, that's going to give you a really nice line quality and a really nice gesture to your drawing. I'll add some of the shadow up here, this, this uh, same Mars orange. It's kind of a terracotta color. If you don't have these pencils, match what with whatever you have. A lot of the color names do... Um, uh, do cross over in the Derwent line, but not all of them. But if you're using like Chromaflow, you just kind of look and find uh, find one that looks the most similar. I'm going to sharpen this. I'm going to use my handheld sharpener so it's not too loud. I, I usually use an electric sharpener though, but it is pretty loud to record with. Oops, shoot, I just broke the lead. All right, I'm gonna use my sharpener. If you have headphones in, I recommend you take them out just for a second. <laughs> there we go. I tend to have bad technique when I use a handheld sharpener, so I tend to break my lead because I rock it too much, so. 
that would be another advice. Just use an electric pencil sharpener for your, not pastel pencils, but your colored pencils and they will break way less. Add a little bit of this into the root ball as well and do a scribbly motion so you can get that texture. I'm going to use some of this wheat, which is just kind of like an off white. And I'm going to start kind of filling in. Now that we've got our shadows in, I feel like I can fill in a lot of the white. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of burnishing over. So I'm coloring fairly firmly, going back and forth over the, the colors that I put in there. And this is kind of blending them together. I want a little bit more yellow in this guy before I, before I do that. A little bit more yellow in here. Because this burnishing, this burnishing technique is going to kind of seal the paper a bit. So you just want to make sure you get your color in before you do that. And the burnishing will also add some lines to it. So if you just want to take like the edge of a pencil and just kind of rouge in some color, that's another technique that you can do. Like I can just kind of rouge that in there and, and burnish it with the, with the lighter color. So either be really precise with your strokes or just go real gentle in there and get the color down to, to blend in later. I think I do have, I don't see a clo this clove in my photo, but I can, I can tell there would be one there. So I'm throwing that in as well. Okay. If you want to turn your work so it's a little more comfortable, please feel free. I'm just gonna try to turn my body so I can keep the the picture in frame, but I'm using firm strokes in that direction, how I was telling you to go in the direction of the, the cloves. And this is generally done with the most local color or the color that is most similar to what you're actually sketching. So in this, this like off-white garlic, this off-white pencil is like my most, I would say local color. If you were gonna pick up the garlic, you would mostly, and had to pick one pencil to represent it, you probably would pick this color. And it's gonna mute out the other colors a bit. So they just become undertones and give it more of like a finished look. And keep on, keep on going. We can add a little bit more color to it, so. So don't worry if you want to adjust it later, you'll still be able to. Remember, we're getting to the center of the garlic, we go straight and then we start curving towards the next edge. Just like you were drawing the lines on a pumpkin. Now, if you feel like you're not getting the linear look that you want, you probably need to sharpen your pencil. Or if you feel like you can't lay down color, then it probably need, means you need to sharpen your pencil. I got lead stuck in the bottom of my, sharp, my uh, handheld sharpener. <laughs> I might have to go back to my, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back to my electric. I'm sorry, guys, this is gonna be a little noisy. Oops, I should put a little bit more. At least I keep my sharpener the furthest away from my microphone, so hopefully it's not too irritating. And we'll add a little bit more of the bright white onto these papery skins where we want it a little bit lifted. And we're gonna carry this over into the stock. I'm just trying to get myself uh, comfortable so I can pull that stroke towards me, but please move your sketchbook if you need to, be comfortable with it.
I'm just trying to keep it in front of the camera so that it's easy for you guys to see. Now on this area here, we've got the inside, the clove area. I don't want to burnish with that wheat. That's too, that's too light. I'm going to do the um, yellow ochre because that's going to give me a more, it's going to give me a little bit of a difference and it's going to look a little bit more accurate because when you pull the skin off of the garlic, you do get a little bit of a different coloration. It depends on the garlic, obviously, what color you get, but I want it to be a little bit different. But since we keep using the same colors over and over, everything's going to match and everything's going to work. I'm using some Ruby Earth, which is just kind of like a reddish brown, a little bit cooler than the terracotta, than the um, oh, the terracotta looking one, which was called Venetian Red. Oh no, what color was that? I can't remember which color we used. I think it might have been Venetian Red. I'm going to add that in for a little bit of shadow. It does have a little bit of a purpley undertone. It's very pretty. This is going to be very repetitive as we work, work around and keep adding layers. So feel free to, uh, to go on your own and trust your instincts and do your own things because we're, we're just basically repeating the techniques and the colors until we've, we've filled it up enough that we like the level of finishing that we've got. Take some of the smoke blue and add that into the shadow. Just make sure I get those lines and that tiny little curve at the bottom of this stock. Add a little bit of that into the exposed clove area. And uh, I think I want to build up a shadow underneath this uh, loose skin there. And I'm going to use, um, actually, you can use any of the browns and blue that you've already used. I think I'll go with that one. The sepia, or you can add an, if you add a new color, that's fine. Just add it in some other places too. Add a little bit of shadow on the outside of this little peeled up papery area too to give it some lift. And I'm gonna start kind of uh, adding some um, shading and some just some scribbly depth here around the root ball where kind of the root ball overlaps the um, the cloves and go in the, the center of that a bit with some scribbles. We'll, we can take a white pen and add some little highlights towards the end to really pick up any of the edges and textures that we need to. And what, a lot of times when I'm doing this, when I'm coloring, as my pencil wears down, I'll start, I'll go into areas where that just need a little bit of color, but not detail, and just do as much as I can before I need to sharpen. So then when I, if I'm just doing a little bit of a, like a rouge of shadow, I can do that with a dull pencil. Um, if I just want to add a little bit of, just a little bit of color somewhere, but not a lot of detail. Detail. I can do that with a dull pencil. Then when I want to go in and add some darker shadows, I mean some darker details, I'll sharpen it. And then I can go in there much easily. Try not to, or more easily, try not to um, over sharpen though, because I just did it. You will snap the tip. These are pretty soft. 
and it's not a big deal. It just, you know, wastes a little bit of, waste a little bit of lead and nobody wants to waste. I'll go in and get that kind of rough edge. Now that I have a sharp pencil, I can go right up to the edge and make it nice and crisp. And I can do that in here as well. If you're drawing smaller, you might get, uh, you might end up kind of waiting around for me to get to something else to, um, to draw. And in that case, you know, just, um, just look around, see what colors you see. We're doing the same techniques the whole time. So you can, you can work ahead if you need to, if I'm going too slow for you. Do we have any questions, Molly? Yes, someone had, act, had asked um, if you can explain what burnishing is. Sure, burnishing is when you um, you color firmly over something to make the colors really shine and get really bold. And it also seals the tooth of the paper so it makes it difficult to add more, um, add more layers down. So you're coloring firmly so you kind of make the paper kind of slick. Usually do it kind of as a, when you're about done with an area because it's hard to layer on top of it. You can go in with a clear alcohol based marker or some uh, paint thinner on a brush and you, you can um, liquefy that paint and get a little more tooth back to work, you know, if you wanna add more layers. But you're generally doing it when you're pretty sure you've got all the color that you want down and you just wanna make it kind of glossy and finished looking. I'm gonna use this crag green to add a little bit of a, uh, of a, of a just a little bit of a green, very muted green tone. And I am burnishing, so I'm coloring firmly and see how it's starting to blend those colors together and make them feel a little solid. And I'll go and throw that in a few areas. I don't I don't like to just put one color in one spot. I like to kind of mix it around here and there. Lindsay, someone had asked how you see the different colors in garlic, like blue, purple, and red. And I think if, do you want to talk about just how you train your eye to see color when something appears white? Yeah, gray? sure. Yeah. Cause like my reference photo looks pretty boring. It just, it was just white garlic. But if I look closely now, this is a terrible photo. Uh, I mean, it's a terrible printout. My printer was acting up, but like I can look here and see a little bit of a blush of pink. I can look here and see a little bit of, of purple. What you're doing is you're looking for the undertones. You can see a little yellow here. You can see a little, uh, purpley red there, um, yellow there, you can see um, blue there. It's just really looking for those subtle colors and um, I, then I amplify them because I like to see that color. I like to kind of push it and I like to let other people see the colors that I see. So as, as artists, we can we can do that. We can take a color that we see and we can push it and amplify it a bit. So that's what I do. Another thing you could do though, is you could take a photo of it with your, um, uh, with your camera or your cell phone, and then you can edit the photo and just slide the saturation up. And when you increase the saturation, any of those undertones will be more pronounced and you'll be able to see them. So that might be helpful until you train your eye to see those undertones. But it's just like when you, um, as you get more proficient, like mixing liquid paint colors, you can start to see like if a blue has a reddish undertone or a blue has a greenish undertone, you just kind of train your eye to do it and it will come, it'll, it'll come. It just takes a little practice and it takes um, really intentionally looking at stuff and not just, um, uh, you have to really look at it, not just see it. You have to really, you have to really um, look for those, for those colors. But, but you'll get there, you'll get there. But your camera can really help you um, pull those colors out. I'm gonna use this Solway Blue, which is just kind of like a really pale gray blue. 
I'm going to use that to kind of mix some of these colors on the stock. I'm really, really a big fan of color as well. So I do tend to, to push it a little bit because I, I just like it. It's part of my, my artistic style. I don't think you can really go wrong with any of the colors here, as long as you have the values right. And values are simply how light or dark something is. So as long as you are um, are just paying attention to how light and how dark your shadows are and how light your highlights are, you're you're not going to make a mistake with any of the colors in this set. They're all they're all very neutralized, and they will all go very well together. So so don't worry about that as you're working. If you don't have the exact same color, maybe you have the set of six or the set of 12, or you have a few random pencils, you're, you're gonna be fine because they're all so, uh, so relative. I'm gonna sharpen my white pencil. So just be aware, it'll be noisy. <laughs> And I didn't go to a full point because I knew I would snap it. And now I'm just going to go in and, and hit the edges of things where I want the brightest highlights. Which we might have from our original sketch anyway, which is great. Think of the edges of any of the torn skin on the garlic that's going to be lifted up away from the body of the garlic it's going to have light able to pass through it because it's translucent and it's not pressed up against the the garlic body so it's just going to have a little bit of a lighter effect so we want to make sure that those things have that that brightest brightest highlight and definitely in our Peeled skin around here. And the edges of the, uh, the end of the stock, the outside edges, I should say. Be sure to tag me on Instagram if you, uh, after the class, if you want to share your artwork. I'm at Lindsay Wyrick. And you can also tag Derwent and Michaels. We'd all love to see it. All right. I can add a little, I don't want to add too much into the root because the root's quite dark, but I, I'm going to do a little bit of scribbling in there just to add some of the lighter roots. And I think before I get too far, I'd like to get some shadow under the garlic so that we can pop it away from the background a bit. Um, I'm going to go in with the black. This is ivory black. And I'm going to very carefully go right up uh, next to the edge of it. And not with a lot of pressure, though. I just want to carve out the edge. And once I've got that edge down, I'll work on this. I'll use a side of my pencil just to kind of rouge in a little bit of this, uh, the color, but I don't want it to be like really harsh and really solid. I just want to get like a really light, we can always make it more harsh, but we can't really lighten it, lighten it back up. Once, if you've pressed really hard on your paper, it's very difficult to, um to lighten it up and as we get away from the garlic we want to lighten up even more so less pressure so holding your your pencil further back is ideal because we don't press as hard when we're holding further back and i'm just kind of doing overlapping ovals here with this now the shape of the garlic is rounded so my shadow is going to kind of feather out 
into a rounded blob, getting lighter and lighter as it gets away from the, the garlic because light can diffuse in the further away it is from where it's touching. Where the garlic touches a table, that spot right here, that's called an occlusion or occlusional shadow. Where the objects touch, that's where it's darkest. That's where it's hard for the light to, to penetrate. So that's where it's always darkest. And then as we get as we get away, the light, the light can kind of filter over and scatter, and then we get a little bit more light in our shadow. And up here, if the garlic isn't touching, we're not gonna see as much dark next to the next to the object. Not like right here where it's laying on the table and we're seeing that dark. And then when you have hey, something Cindy that's not Kurt. as uh, sorry, oh, yeah. hey, Lindsay. Um, someone is asking if you would describe these pencils as soft or if they're chalky or I think people are probably just trying to get a feel for them, but they haven't, they don't really have them. So do you mind just kind sure. of explaining how they feel? Yeah, sure. I would say they're soft, but dry. I wouldn't say they're chalky. They don't feel like if I run my finger over, I can, I can blend them a little bit. See? blend them a little bit with my finger so they're a less waxy than like your typical colored pencil like if you think of um uh, chroma flow is very waxy and very slick these and and then if you think of like a chalk pastel or a pastel pencil is very dry and very dusty this is kind of smack dab in the middle between like you can see it's on my finger there um where if i did that with a chroma flow it probably wouldn't pick up anything uh i'd say it's kind of in the middle it's just it's it's dry but not dusty and I would say it's pretty soft. It's not as soft as a pastel pencil, and it's not as soft as a chroma flow. It's a it's a little bit harder than a than a um, color soft, but it does feel kind of similar to the color soft pencils. And I could put a little bit of a shadow in here as well. Not too much. Oh, so uh, what I was saying before is like this. This stem here, it's more papery, it's less dense, so there'd be less of a dark, uh, heavy shadow coming off of this than off of the bulb where it's very dense and it's blocking more light. Because some light could filter through the paperiness of that stem and, um, in fact, I will just use my finger to blend, uh, and let some light still pass, even though there's a shadow there, it would still let some light pass. But these do have some amount of wax in them. They will be compatible. If you were going to use these like with, say you want to use them with pastel pencils, I would put your pastel pencils down first and then layer this on top because your pastel pencils probably won't stick very well on top of this. If you were going to use this with, um, with say, Color Soft or Chroma Flow, I would put these down first and then I would layer up the Color Soft or Chroma Flow because they're waxier and softer and stickier and they would stick on top of this a little bit better. I'm also going to take the black and add some into the center of the root ball, just with some scribbles. And I'm just going to kind of trace that little edge there. Any place where I feel like I need a little bit of a pop of shadow, I'll trace it with the black. I don't want to put too much black in there because this is a white object. All right, I'm going to go back to the yellow ochre and I'm going to use it on its side. I'm just going to kind of fill in the rest of the root ball here. I feel like I need to get a little more density in the color. So we can put our detail over it. I also want a little bit more of this yellow on the head of garlic itself. I don't necessarily want to get rid of the lines that I've put down already, so I'm just using it on its edge and just uh, kind of overlaying a little bit. I 
these almost feel they're not quite as chalky as like say a Conte crayon, but it's kind of similar. It's kind of like that difference between like uh, that kind of in between of a of a hard waxy crayon and a soft pastel. My recommendation, if you're curious about these, but you're not ready to invest in the set, get a Chinese white, maybe get a lamp black and uh, use them with the with the supplies you already have and see uh, see what you think of them because you, they're not going to go to waste. You'll definitely use those colors with what you already have. And then if you really like it, then buy a set and because that's the most cost effective way. It's only 24 colors. They're all very useful. Um, they're light fast, so you can use them in your finished artwork for sale if you like to do that or stuff you want to display. I like to mix them with my Dermot light fast pencils because I find they work really well, uh, really well with those with those pencils. And then I don't have to worry about something not being uh, light fast if it's something I want to display or hang up. The light fast are creamier feeling though, if you're curious about how they differ. But I'm kind of I'm kind of precious with my light fast, my Dermot light fast. I I'm very uh, I only use it for like portraits or things I know I'm gonna want to display. I don't tend to use it on everyday stuff. Putting in highlights here. Kind of just putting them where the light is hitting the most rounded parts of the center of the the individual clove bulbs. I want to get that nice bright color. Let's see, I've got about 15 minutes left. All right, now I want some more detail in the root bulb. So I'm just adding some marks with my white. I'm turning my pencil as I go because that's a little cheat so you don't have to sharpen so often because you then if you keep turning your pencil, you kind of keep the edge a little bit sharp. I'm gonna take this uh, sepia red and do the same thing, just kind of try to put some little root shapes and textures in there. Next time you go to the grocery store or farmer's market, see if you can find those pretty garlics that have a lot of different colors in them. Those are so fun to draw. I had got some once at the, um, oh, what was it called? Oh, well, the Unity, it's called the Unity Fair, but basically what it is is a big um, agricultural fair and uh, there's so many beautiful garlics and we planted some but before I planted any of them I sketched some because the colors were amazing. The ones you get at the grocery store aren't usually quite as robust but man they had some really pretty ones there. Just layering up my scribbles. Black, white, yellow ochre, sepia. You just want to build up that texture. Sharpen if you need to. And as a last step, we'll go in with, uh, with a pen and add some little details. Adding a little bit of uh, shading here towards the root ball to kind of blend that dark in with the lighter tones we have going on. So it's not so harsh. I mean, you want some contrast, but you don't want everything to be overly harsh either. I'll make like a little bit of a split in that papery stock. And feel free. If you see like a little something that you think you could lift, you could add like a little bit of a interesting detail to it. Go ahead and do that. Sometimes we just end up the way we color something in. It ends up like, oh, I could put a little a little rip in the skin there. I could put a little spot. I could do something that's going to add a little bit of like I just kind of added a little bit of a curled edge. Um, 
yeah, feel free to do any of that. Add little divots, add little uh, folds. That stuff is, is what makes it interesting and will make your artwork look unique. It's usually not the perfect things. I mean, when you're at the grocery store, you, you know, you're picking that perfect pear, you're picking that perfect um, tomato. But when you're, when you're drawing, what you want is those imperfect ones because the imperfect ones are much more interesting to look at. I think I want to do a little bit more with the Ruby Earth and the Mars Violet, but I am going to give them a quick sharpen. If you are looking for a sharp, an electric sharpener that will handle the Derwent pencils, you got to make sure it has at least an eight millimeter hole. And that's even a tight, a tight fit for these. You can go sharp. Uh, you can go sharper with the tips if you're not going to put a lot of pressure. Not even I snapped the tip on that one. Molly, does Derwent do an electric sharpener? We do not. Okay. I didn't think you did, but you never know. Yeah, no electric sharpeners. You have one that's like a desk mount though, right? That you that holds the pencil still so you don't have to hold it. We do. We have the super point uh, manual sharpener. It's a helical sharpener. So mm -hmm. it allows you to take it to a really um, fine point. It can be kind of um, hard to understand how to use it. And I think oftentimes it's misunderstood, but it's a nice sharpener. And it, it handles multiple sizes very well. I think the holding the pencil is the important thing. Like I can't seem to hold it without wobbling it. And I tend up, I tend to snap the, um, the lead. So that's, that's good that it holds a pencil for you. So you don't have to worry about that. I just use an electric because I'm, I'm impatient. Okay. Um, I think I could go a little bit darker with a shadow. If you don't want to go in with more black, you can go in with this, uh, like that navy blue color if you want, the, the ink blue. If you want to add that wood grain look, you can do that. Actually, I do like this ink blue because that does add a little richness. Um, and you can build up a density without it getting too dark. See, I can go kind of dark in there with that ink blue. If you want to have the look of the wood grain, like all you got to do is just be brave. And I like to start with like the like a crease, like right here. You can see that that crease between the boards. I'd start right there, and I would try to make it not perfectly line up with anything. Maybe just be kind of like, you know, you wouldn't want it to line up with the edge of something because that I, I don't know. Having things line up don't look as well as if you. Um, as if you kind of have things offset, if that makes any sense. And then you can start building up a little bit of a graininess. I'm gonna do a little bit of a dark right next to that. Uh, next to that, that uh, stock, just to add a little setting, but I would try just to kind of maybe focus your detail around the garlic and then just kind of let it fade off into nothing because I think that would, that's the prettiest. If you try to get too much detail, then it's, it can be hard to, to know when to stop, you know, having just a little bit of a, a little bit of a wood grain looks nice. I think I'm going to take a, just kind of like a neutral browns color here, this warm earth. If you want to do the wood grain, I would kind of, maybe base coat it a little bit here, just add a little rouge of color. Let it fade off into nothing the further you get away from the, the garlic. Obviously spend as much time as you want on this. You don't have to rush. I'm trying to think, I, my, my drawing that I, this drawing here probably took me um, close to two hours. So, and that was me not trying to teach anybody. That was me just doing my thing, just sitting out on the deck and drawing.
and it can be hard to draw what you're trying to pay attention to what tr somebody's telling you to do and it's you know I, I understand that's a lot of that's a lot of focus and that's a lot of work I just put I make kind of like V's of uh, of I don't know V's of patterning to show like a wood grain you could add color there if you wanted to if you want to do like a uh, like a worn out painted painted worn design this is that chocolate, I think. Yep, chocolate brown. I'm adding some of that to the wood grain pattern patterning. Add some little nail holes here and there. Give it that uh, that look of a, either a crate or a table. I'm going to take the brown ochre, add a little bit of warmth in between the wood grain shapes. And of course, you know, like I said, spend as much time as you want to on this. I'm going to grab the wheat and just add just a little bit of highlight right next to the um, the splits in the wood. And you can keep building and building and building and come up with a really beautiful, realistic wood grain texture. I just wanted to get you started so when you're finishing this up at home, you kind of have a roadmap of where to go. I wouldn't overblend the, um, the wooden uh, setting area though because then you won't have that nice contrast of texture between the smoother garlic and the, the wood grain. Now for final final details I'm going to use a gel pen here. Uh, you can use any white paint pen you have. I'm going to throw in just a little highlight, basically just a little highlights on the roots. The person's, the viewer's imagination is going to fill in so much detail. You do not need to do nearly as much work as you think you do when you're drawing. Any of these edges, I like to wiggle my hand as I'm doing this because that will give us that, you know, if maybe we didn't get the detail in with a pencil, maybe our pencil wasn't as sharp as we wanted it to be, we can get those, um, those pretty little ruffly edges with our pen. And these pencils are dry enough that the gel pen will stick to them pretty well. Any place where you need a little bit of highlight that the pencil wasn't quite bright enough for, it's a great option for the uh, for the gel pen. You can even do some of the uh, you can do some of the like crisp folds in the. Uh, in the papery stock there. Your pen will probably skip on some of the areas if you've really got a lot of pencil down there because it's kind of waxy. It's all, it's not as waxy as, as other pencils, but it does definitely have, it's gonna resist a little bit. If you want just a glow of highlight, I will put down the pen and then spread it with my finger. You know, you can just kind of go in there, add that color and just kind of paint it out with your, with your finger, but that's really that's really the gist of it. You just keep uh, adding until you're happy with it. Um, you could take a couple hours like I did on my original one. And I see, can I put those both on camera together? Yeah, you get the idea there. You know, you can take as much time as you want, and you should, because art is fun. There's no race, there's no rushing. Have fun with it. And I think that is about all. I have the um, the reference photo and 
photos of this finished artwork on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram on the community post on YouTube. So if you want to um, get a closer look or you can go to my Instagram and you can find out other photos of garlic that I've taken and you're more than welcome to use them. Um, but does anybody have any questions before we, before we wrap up? So nobody's hanging when they're at home. No one seemed to have any last minute questions, Lindsay. You just thought to good comments. Everyone Wonderful. really liked the shading and, and how you did all of that intricate work. So I think that was great to spend so much time doing that. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Uh, Nicole, if you want to bring me back up on camera, I'll uh, I'll say goodbye to everybody. And yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun here hanging out this afternoon, this Friday the 13th, drawing garlic. Um, I know I go kind of fast because we've got to get a lot in in an hour, but it's, it's the same steps over and over and over again. And colored pencil work does take time. It's probably the slowest going medium that I've ever used. So be patient with yourself. Don't feel like you have to have a finished picture by the end of an hour while you're trying to watch and learn and digest the information. That's, un that's unrealistic. If you want to hold up your photo so you're painting so I can see it, I'll scroll through and look at them. That's always so fun to see. But if you want to finish up your drawings and tag me on social media, I can see it that way too. Oh, wow. You guys are doing so well. I cannot believe that you guys got so far in one hour. This is amazing, guys. I am so impressed. Wow. You guys. Oh, my word. I am so proud of you. Guys, thank you so much for being brave and holding up your work. You've done amazing things in the course of an hour. I, I please, please tag me on social media. I want to see. I want to be able to zoom in on these guys. They look so good. Um, well, on behalf of Michaels and Derwent, I'm Lindsay. Thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me, and I hope to see you next month. Oh, this is what we're doing next month. Um, if you want to sign up, it is listed on Michaels right now. We're going to do a Christmas ornament that you can use as a Christmas card if you want to. I have no problem if anybody wants to paint these and have them printed out on their Christmas cards if they don't want to paint them by hand, but that's coming up next month on the 17th. And I hope you join me for that. Um, you can tag Michael Stores, you can tag me, you can tag Derwent, uh, under, Derwent US underscore art, I believe on Instagram. If you search Derwent, you'll see it. And um, I think that's it. And you, you can use the hashtag make it with Michaels as well. And that will, uh, that will show up for all of the different classes that Michael's offers. So thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.